As we talk about the topic of homosexuality with others, there are two very important principles that Scripture wants us to keep in mind that should guide our discussions and guide the attitude of our discussions. It talks about that in a number of places. I'll share two of them with you. Ephesians chapter 4 says this. It says, Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. And then 1 Corinthians 13 verse 6 says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And so the two principles, of course, you have are God wants us to speak the truth and we ought to speak the truth in love. Is that um, it's not loving if you speak or support a lie um, and if you're telling lies or telling the truth <laughs> without, without being loving, it's not going to do much good. We speak the truth and we speak in love. So I want to review just, uh, just a couple of truths or share a couple of truths that I wrote down related, related to the Bible and related to this topic. I said on the, on the first day of these, the, um, in the first video series here, my goal is not to try to convince you to believe that the Bible is true, um, or, um, but just to share what the content of the Bible is. And yet, that's what the Bible presents about itself, that the Bible presents itself as God's word and it presents itself as a book that is entirely true. So that's true. That's just from the very simple content of the Word of God, is that it can presents itself as a book that is God's truth. Um, another, another truth, the Bible actually makes itself easier to discredit than any other religious book that you, will, that you will find out there. Because basically, you only have to prove that one thing did not happen and it throws the entire book away, and that one thing is the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, you basically have to prove that a person who was dead did not actually rise from the dead and... If you can successfully do that, then you discredit the entire book. But so far, nobody's been able to do that. There are people who have doubts about that and people who think that it didn't happen or wonder how it might happen. But there's, uh, there's, there's no proof that it didn't happen. And in fact, if you go throughout the entire Bible, there are, many, uh, there are many pieces of history that's shared in the Bible and there are many promises that God makes in the Bible. And if you look at all those pieces of history and those, uh, and those, uh, those promises that God shares, you cannot find a single one of them that is ever proven to be false. Again, there are many who have questions about them and they wonder, did that actually happen? Or they think, I don't see how that could happen. Or they think, there seems to be an inconsistency here where it says here in one thing, but I'm kind of wondering how you, how you resolve that. But there is nothing in the Bible that is ever proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, 100%, to be, to be false. Um, which is in line with what the Bible says about itself. When the angel visited Mary and told her that she was going to conceive as a virgin, the, um, the angel, you know, Mary asked, well, how will this be? The angel said, well, no word from God will ever fail. God is very serious about keeping his promises. And as far as we can tell, so far looking at the Bible, he has kept every, every one of them, though there are, there's still some that, that have yet to be kept. Um, but that's a, that's a truth. Another truth that we looked at from the Bible. According to the Bible, homosexuality is one of many sins. That, uh, that will separate a person from God. We talked about that uh, earlier in one of the videos. Also true, there is a growing army of support for this one sin in the, in the public arena. Lots of different groups, lots of different areas that are promoting homosexuality as okay and in some cases even, even God-pleasing and even, and even Christian. It's also true that throughout history there have been many Christians who have shared the truth of homosexuality in a very unloving way. Some Christians have been very harsh and unloving you know, in how they've talked about homosexuality and how they've spoken with homosexuals and how they've referred to those who struggle, who struggle with homosexuality or who practice homosexuality. And for every time, and while I, have not, I do not know everybody who has ever done this, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that has ever happened, that the truth of God's word has ever been shared in a way that has any, been anything less, less than loving. But it happens a lot, and it discredits the message of God's word and discredits the heart of God when, when that is done. It's also true that throughout history, many groups and many in the name of Jesus have used the Bible to oppress certain particular groups, women, children, um, minorities. Um, the people have used the Bible to support the institution of slavery, to say it's a God-pleasing thing. And again, where that has happened, I'm sorry. And anybody who has ever done that should, should say sorry too. And if you're an individual who has ever talked about this, talked about, tried to share the truth in an unloving or 
in a way that's uh, in an unloving way or in a way that's not consistent with what the Bible teaches in its context, then you should apologize too. It's, uh, it's, the, right, it's the right thing to do. And why have people done that? Why have people used the Bible to, uh, to support their own agenda? Yeah, the simple reason might be simply because they're selfish or they, it feels good to be uh, right or, um, or they, just, they want to get what they want or, or whatever it is. But whatever the motivation, it's not right if the Bible has been misused, misconstrued, mistranslated to, um, just to suit, somebody, to suit somebody's own desires. So a lot of different truths. Um, I have a couple others. The truth is this topic creates a lot of hurt. It, takes, it creates a lot of hurt and it's a hard topic to talk about. It's a hard topic to talk about for those who started having homosexual feelings um, and grew up and grew up in places where they knew that that was not okay because it wasn't easy for someone to talk. It wasn't easy to find someone to talk to about it. And that's hard. And that's a heavy weight to carry. That's a lot of, that's a lot of hurt. And in many cases, you tried to carry that burden all alone because you were afraid of how people would react and you had been, you had been led to believe that they would react in a very hostile way towards you and not love you anymore. That creates a lot of hurt. When this, is, uh, when this sin is continued in somebody's life and they go on with it and it eventually becomes a public thing or a part of just their everyday life, their everyday existence, that also creates a lot of hurt. Broken families, broken relationships, it becomes a divisive issue instead of one that unites. Um, one group holding on to the truth and one group holding on, holding on to a lie. Um, and, that creates, and that creates a lot of hurt. It creates a lot of hurt and it's very hard in, in a lot of other ways too. And for one person in particular, it hurt for Jesus too. It hurt for Jesus. To be called guilty of every sin that every one of us has ever committed, it hurt for him. It hurt when the innocent Lamb of God was put on a cross and stabbed with nails and offered as the sacrifice that would make the full payment that would wash us clean of every sin and leave us as spotless, pure, radiant, holy children of God in Christ. It hurt. That's the truth. But Jesus also knew the truth that he was the only one who could save us from any sin, no matter what it is. His was the only life that was valuable enough and holy enough to be acceptable enough to God to cover the sins of the whole world. And that was a, that was a truth that hurt, but he was willing to go through with it. And as a result, sinners like us get to look forward to the reality of heaven because all of our sins have been forgiven in him. And those are important truths to hold on to. Uh, And as we look to talk about this topic with others, as we look to express it with others, just keep in mind this principle from the book of Philippians, where it says this. It says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And so maybe a key question to ask yourself before you get into a discussion with somebody on the topic of homosexuality is this. Am I being selfish? Am I having this conversation as my motivation that I want to be right or that I want my life to be easy? Is it anything other than love? Ask yourself, what is the truth that I know? And what is the most loving thing that I can do? And that will guide you. It will. And then trust this last passage. James chapter 4, it says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. He will. How? When? What will it look like? It doesn't say. We only know that no word from God will ever fail. Humble yourselves before God. Serve one another in love. Have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. And God will lift you up. We talked today about the two very important principles of speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. How exactly we're supposed to do that or what that looks like can be a challenge for a lot of Christians. Uh, I'm going to ask you to consider doing two things. If you have good practical ways of sharing, uh, sharing the truth with love, like ways that have worked for you, phrases that have worked, um, conversations or practices that in your experience have, have done a lot of good, um, let's, let's help one another out and equip each other a little bit better to be able to speak the truth in love. If there's something that works for you, uh, share it so that it might work for somebody else in their conversations as well. And the second thing I'm going to ask you to consider doing is if you've shared the truth 
with love with somebody on the topic of homosexuality and you've seen it produce some really, really great fruit. Like it, uh, if it did something noticeably good, if it changed somebody's heart, if it got them going in the right direction, could I ask you to share your story? I have found that um, people who struggle with this with family members and with friends, they get discouraged easily because they, uh, it's, it's easy to believe that uh, hearts aren't going to change and paths through life aren't, aren't going to change. But we know that the Word of God does change people. And if it has in your life, uh, would you consider sharing your story to give some encouragement to those who are still looking to speak the truth in love with people they love? We'll see you tomorrow. A few years ago, I wrote this little book. It's called Gay and God. Loving everyone that God made and everything that God wrote. And I've heard from so many of you how much this book mattered. For many of you longtime Christians, it helped you see that simple command of Jesus to love everyone like you never have before. And for others, it opened your eyes to the truth of God's word, those passages that are so easy to forget. In fact, so many of you were impacted by this book that you asked for more. You wanted to take the topic deeper. You wanted to dig into each of those passages, deal with real life objections, and see the best way to love God's word and to love all the people in your life. You asked, in essence, for a study guide. So we wrote one. <laughs> I'm so excited to share with you the brand new Gay and God study guide. Because these two books together are a great opportunity to figure out what love looks like in a complicated world. How do we love people regardless of their sexual attraction or preference? And how do we hold on to every syllable of every sentence that our Savior said? I hope that Gay and God and this brand new study guide help you and help me do just that. If these messages are a blessing to you and your faith and you want more, we'd love to make it easy for you. You can just click this button right here to get connection to a YouTube subscription. Or if you want these devotions right into your inbox, you can click right here. YouTube here, email here. Email here, YouTube there. Click both these buttons. We'll give you as much of Jesus as we can because we know that Jesus is all that we need.